Okay, it's been far too long since I've done one of these. This one is going to be about spirits because I feel that they are very misunderstood and a lot of players take them for granted or underestimate them. Okay, what do you need to know about spirits? Okay, we'll start at the top. Well, the three biggest spirits are, of course, the Worm, the Wild, and the Weaver. Um, that could be covered by something else because you're never going to deal directly with them. They're always somehow a larger threat. Uh, then you have the Celestines. Okay, again, the Celestines you're probably not going to deal much with, but they're there. I'm going to start with the Incarna, okay? Incarna spirits are a particular level of spirits. They almost always cover some grand scope of things. Um, the most common Incarna that everybody's going to know about are going to be the ones that are the tribal um, totems. They have the packs with individual tribes, like the Stag to the Fianna, the Grandfather Thunder to the Shadow Lord, and so on. There are other Incarna spirits. They are on a similar level. They usually represent some grand um, scope of idea or some such. I mean, they have to be empowered to exist. This should be the top level of spirit that most Guru will end up ever dealing with. And they are incredibly powerful. They can grant gifts, they can grant gnosis, they have information. Um, they are complex. They will represent the various things that um, they exist because of. Um, those tenets are going to be overwhelming in their personality. But these ones are complex enough that other things, you know, they could have other motives. But in the end, their motives are going to be designed around what the spirit is. A spirit of war, most of their actions are going to somehow revolve around war, whether it's the active use of war, um, the honor that is in war, the wise decisions that are made in war, even, you know, the opposite direction, unwise and dishonorable such. They will cover that. Okay. Um, when you go below the Incarna, it is when people start to get confused. And I think the books are wrong on some things they have in there. The next level down is the Jagglings. Jagglings tend to um, serve those Incarna. They are very intense representations of what the spirit represents. But they are just complex enough that they can serve as pack totems, they can teach gifts, and so on. Um, this is the spirit that is going to be most commonly interacted with by the Seps, by the Guru in, in general. And they are going to have 90% of their uh, actual interaction with these type of spirits. Then you have your um, gafflings. Gafflings serve jagglings. Gafflings don't tend to have any kind of dimension to them. A lot of times they, they're they brought into existence to serve one little purpose. Once they finish that purpose they cease to exist. Um, they don't tend to think they tend to be very um, tunnel vision, very narrow-minded in in what they're they're doing. It's kind of like um, I don't know how to explain it. You know, it's it's kind of like that automaton that it load. You know, that robot goes over there and loads that conveyor line. It walks over here, picks this up, goes over there, pick and puts it down. That's all the spirits are going to be, is whatever they've been created to do, that's what they do. They don't know much outside of that. They're hard to communicate with because they're, they're barely sentient. Um, it, it's, like, it's like trying to have a conversation um, you know, with a fish, with a pet fish. It doesn't do much. These are fairly common, but you're not going to interact with them. I mean, if you're interacting with them, it's probably bad interaction. You know, I mean, they might be bringing messages. I mean, that might be their only purpose is to appear, spurt out the message, and go. Um, could be any number of things. Now, there is an ephemeral group called anglings. 
the book lists them as an offshoot of gafflings. I don't agree with that. Because everything else describes them as they are brought into being for the sole purpose of being hunted by the guru for their gnosis. That's a single purpose. That is the definition of a gaffling. So, I guess it's up to the individual storytellers and their games. I don't use the, I mean, I don't use the anglings as jagglings. I suppose you can say that the anglings are kind of a bridge between them, and that you could have both uh, jaggling and gaffling anglings, but um, a jaggling angling, which is there basically just to, you know, produce gnosis for somebody, is, it seems like a waste of power. And the amount of gnosis it would give would be horrendously huge, considering you know you'll have you'll <laughs> half dozen or a dozen just for one one spirit. That's a lot. So I always use them as gafflings. A gaffling spirit, or an angling in particular, that is summoned. Sometimes they're brood types. they you know they come from a certain brood. If you're not going to pay proper kiminage and contrition or such to it, you are going to upset it. Or upset its broodmaster. Like I said, anglings, in my opinion, since I think of them as gafflings, don't really have the emotion to get upset. It's at the jaggling level that they can get upset. And the incarna, well, the incarna can get downright bitchy. And when you go above that, it just gets worse. You have something called notoriety. When you upset a spirit either by going against one of his bands when you're beholden to it, uh, welching on a deal, or just outright insulting it, um, you gain what's called notoriety. That spirit, the spirits of its brood, allied spirits, tend to start not liking you and making things more difficult for you. As your notoriety grows, other spirits will start to get involved. It doesn't matter that you pissed off Rat's brood, Falcon's now getting upset because it's heard about your bad reputation. Notoriety is something that needs to be nipped in the bud as soon as you can. On the other side of it, they don't really have the opposite of it. Um, a positive aspect. Now, some games will do it as uh, Newman, which is like a spirit familiar. Some will do it as spirit affinity. Some will do it as spirit network. Um... In my particular game, we do it as totem because we have functionally um, two types of totem we use in our game. We have pack totems, which is a temporary type deal. Then we have just generic totem points. This represents favors that you've done for a particular spirit or favor that you have with that particular spirit. It's a background, so in my opinion, just like other backgrounds, it gets expended. This is more like mentor, where with mentor, you know, the more you learn from your mentor, the less they have to teach. With this, once a spirit does part of a favor for you or whatever, it'll reduce your totem points in it because Lord knows spirits don't like to be beholden to anybody. And they will do what they can to get out of those deals. And that means they're going to make themselves useful when they can so that they can say, hey, this, <laughs> this light's clean. I don't know you nothing. Um, so that's how I view it. key thing is a bigger game needs a spirit guide you need somebody who's going to be able to keep track of the spirits who has met the spirits who has pissed the spirits off if if the more powerful spirits have any quirks um, they'll keep track of that if you have variants on spirits because obviously if you're going to talk about ancestor spirits there can be a number of variants in one area. I mean, you could end up having, if you're in a Fianna area, you might have four different Fianna ancestor spirits in the area. And they all have a different personality. They all might encompass something slightly different about Fianna culture. And therefore, sometimes picking the right one is critical. Okay. Um, what else? I'm going to do a different video on fetishes and talons, which are directly connected to spirits, but we'll get to that. Okay, Kiminage. Kiminage is a two-definition word, and most people don't realize this. What most people think of when they think of Kiminage is, this is what I have agreed to do for the spirit to have taught me that gift, or 
gone into that talent or whatever it may be. And yes, that is Kiminich. But there is another form of Kiminich that should be done first. It's like a pre uh, preparatory Kiminich. You want to summon a particular spirit. Well, the easiest thing, go to its shrine. If there is one on your scepter nearby. Build a shrine if you really need to and it's a big favor you're asking it. Go to some place where its representation is, you know, hefty. Um, I mean, if you're looking to summon Mosquito and there's no shrine to it, go to a fetid water, a pool of water where the mosquitoes breed and summon it when they're swarming. It has power then. Um, you should also do things that are going to honor it. Um, whatever spirit it may be. I mean, whether it's bringing fresh, you know, fresh meat to feed uh, to the weaker wolves when you're summoning Fenris or another wolf aspect. Whether it's, oh, I don't know, bringing, I mean, bringing and sacrificing honey when you're trying to summon bear. All of those things should add into it. They're bonuses and they, they work to the advantage of it. So, you need to look at that. Um, contrition is often mistaken for Kimmage. When you have pissed off a spirit, you have to do contrition. Now, a lot of times the right of contrition will be enough. Read the right of contrition, it'll explain why. But, you have to do it. And sometimes that means you're going to take a task on for yourself. Now, when it comes to the different auspices, all of them can deal with uh, spirits. It's just a case of what spirits they're dealing with at any given time. Usually, the theurges will be the ones dealing with them. Um, sometimes when mediating, the philodox are the big ones. But almost anybody can if they can understand a spirit. And if they can't understand a spirit, <coughs> a lot of times they can get it through or you have a theurge nearby that you can ask. Or you can ask an Octana, but don't expect them to tell you everything. I think I've covered all the basics of spirits at this point. Um, I think the most misused and most underused aspect of the game, and they there it's an injustice. Okay. That'll be it. If you have any questions, um, you know you can always post them here, or you can always go to my Facebook page and, and ask the questions there. Okay, have a good day, guys.